So, without further ado, may I introduce uh, who is she? The very glamorous, but very very smart, um, Dr. Catherine Ku Latimon. Thank you very much. That's very kind of Marina to say what she said about me. Unlike, unlike her, I can't say, as you know, you already know me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to take a seat. Um, I'd like to introduce to you, without further ado, the panelists for this morning. So uh, first, we have the editor of Zafigo itself, Eliza Thomas. Eliza, would you please come on stage? Please take a seat, Eliza. Good morning, everybody. And then we have Lavinia. <laughs> Roger. Uh, Lavinia has, a, has her own cheerleading squad back there, as I've been told. <laughs> Lavinia is the regional, um, the regional sales, no, communication, the regional head of communication for Expedia Asia. And Lavinia is based in Singapore and just flew in for this. Good morning. Thank you, Catherine. And last but not least, we have Asha Menon. You might, some of you might have seen Asha in your flight many, many years ago when she was cabin crew for Malaysia Airlines. But Asha has now started a very interesting business called Find Your Mojo VIP Retreats for Women. And you can check out her website. <laughs> Right. Um, El Eliza has also, you might have seen her name on the cover, back cover of Clio magazine uh, because she was the former editor, sub-editor at Clio as well. So welcome everyone on stage. Could you please give them a Good hand? Good morning. A hand? Yes, well. I wanted to start because the title of our panel is What Do We Want From Travel? As if we don't know that already. I would, want, I would like to start with Asha because you've been in the travel industry since you were 18 and I dare not ask how old you are <laughs> now, but what changes have you seen in the travel industry since you first started and now? Good morning everyone. Um, it's so lovely to be here um, and to be sharing my story um, with this bunch of uh, wonderful ladies here. So I think um, Travel has evolved so much. Now, uh, when I started uh, at the age of 18, and uh, I actually deliberately chose a profession that would allow me to travel because I was so in love with traveling, and I never really hopped on an on a airplane prior to um, taking up the job as a cabin crew. So I had this, you know, this big vision, this dream of, you know, jet setting and, and seeing the world um, from what it was back then to what it is today. I think it has evolved so much. I think uh, women are getting out there, you know, and, and these days in the, in the world of Instagram, right, uh, we see some lovely pictures from women who are solo travelers. Um, they are actually changing the way we perceive how traveling used to be um, and doing some really amazing, amazing things like, um, you know, hiking at Machu Picchu in Peru, um, going to the Galapagos Island and living on the boat for a couple of um, weeks. Um, so you really have seen, I mean, you know, we, we're seeing a lot just uh, based on social media that travel has... Um, you know, it's one of the most coolest things to do. People are quitting jobs to literally travel the world, <laughs> right? And more jobs are being created. Uh, I speak, you know, um, wearing my, my human resource hat at the moment, and I actually can vouch that companies are also changing employee benefits to include remote working and giving location independence to uh, employees as a reward and retention program. So definitely it has uh, uh, evolved so much and, and, I, and I believe that it will continue to evolve and uh, I think travel is one, it's probably going to be associated to 
um, you know, it's going to be a new norm, right? So, yeah. Thank you, Asha. Just uh, out of curiosity, has anyone in this room thought about quitting your job to travel? <laughs> Hands up. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out you're right, Asha. <laughs> Okay, what about, what about Eliza? You've, you've you know, edited women's magazines. Have you seen any travel trends or have you covered anything about women and travel in the, in the Clio magazine when you were sub-editor? Um, when I started Clio in 2012, so this was six years ago, and we were just um, starting something called um, the top no, hot 30, under 30. So we were looking for women who were doing things with their lives, like being really inspiring and stuff like that. And a lot of the women um, worked jobs or, you know, they were, they were either um, human rights lawyers at, you know, under the age of 30 or they started their own businesses and stuff like that. So when we started doing that in 2012, a lot of these women only listed travel as something that they did on the side. They're like, oh, you know, I have my own business. I don't really have the time to travel as much. But when I do, I travel for leisure and I travel for, you know, just to, to so a lot of them said, because I saw it on Instagram, this is what I wanted to do. This, I, you know, I saw somebody take this picture. This is what I wanted to do and this is where I wanted to go. But um, later on, like I would say maybe 2015, when I was working on my last uh, Hot 30 Under 30, a lot of these women actually were going to places and doing things further than just, you know, getting, wanting to get pictures for Instagram. They actually wanted to uh, rebuild communities and learn culture and learn food. There was um, one girl who went to Nepal to help, um, uh, to teach underprivileged Ch uh, children in like small communities and villages and stuff like that. So I think women or like younger women these days actually have a deeper purpose than just, you know, having fancy photographs and cool memories to, you know, they want to do more and be citizens of the world as opposed to just being, you know, uh, in their own space and community and country. So yeah, it has changed tremendously, I think. Hmm. Thank you, thank you very much. And Lavinia, have you got anything more to add to that as in, in terms of the changes uh, in terms of women and travel? I, I would like to add to that. Um, I'll start with some statistics. Um, I think when we look at the, uh, I work at Expedia and I, and I look at data every day um, and, and that sort of forms you know, the way I communicate about what we do at Expedia. And if I do some comparisons um, in, in 2016 compared to now, two years ago, um, more than 60% of our bookings made um, on Expedia come from females. Um, so whether it's for leisure travel, whether it's for business travel. If you compare that to, to uh, a more global statistics, more than 70% or 80% of the world travelers are women. Um, and so it, it is a clear sign that women are now the decision makers for, for travelers, um, whether or not you're a mother, you're, you're, um, you're a teenager, you're a millennial, um, you're a young executive, women are, are taking on the decision making power of, of travel. Um, and when we look at the, um, the job industry, one in five jobs are related to travel or tourism in the world. Um, and so there is great potential for travel. Um, you know, everyone loves to travel. It is part of our element. Uh, the one thing that, that makes us different in the way we travel is how we travel because we make different choices, whether you're traveling for leisure, uh, whether or not you're doing a spontaneous trip. Um, we have a lot of work, working women these days that would do blazer. Blazer is a concept now where you mix uh, business with leisure. Uh, so if you're traveling for, for business, uh, you do a little bit of leisure in it. Um, I travel a lot for my work and I always take the opportunity to, to visit the city, uh, to learn the local culture, to understand some local nuances uh, when I travel. And I think that alone um, is such a transformational journey for, for women these days. If there is any media, if there are any media people in the house, I'd like you to take note about what Lavinia has just cited us, you know, more than 60% of people who book holidays in Expedia are from women, and yet we don't hear a lot of effort or initiatives from the industry 
saying that we are doing this or that for women, right? Things still haven't, they have changed, but they're changing very slowly. Would you agree, Lavinia? And, uh, and uh, to add to that question, you know, what, what concrete provisions is Expedia uh, doing in terms of providing for how women travel? So, um, we conduct a lot of consumer research, and I'm actually very interested in some of the research efforts to, uh, that you work on. So on a yearly basis, we look at data, we, con uh, we conduct third-party studies, um, uh, we, we do it across demographics, so it could be multi-generational, it could be millennials, just to see what, what inspires you to book for travel. And we look at the different travel patterns, is it cost, is it um, uh, the opportunities that's out there. Um, and now you, when, you, when you travel, you get uh, various forms of uh, accommodation. Um, so women in general prefer settling for hotels, for, for a general sense of safety, because hotel gives you that sense of security. It gives you the access to, to all your um, information that you need um, or any activities that you're doing while you're traveling. So women, the number one priority when they travel is they look for a sense of security and safety. Um, we're, we're not very adventurous um, in that sense, and we will not break the boundaries of safety if you're traveling alone. Um, but that, that has changed because now hoteliers, uh, they, they do take that into consideration. Um, we have a lot of um, hotels out there that would cater for women. So, um, and I would say the JW Merritt is one of them. So JW Merritt has a women's only floor um, with women facilities because they are looking to ensure that women feel safe and secured when they travel. Um, they have all the information that they want um, and, that, and that doesn't change over time. And so I think that is something that y we can take note of and something that the industry can help us achieve together. Thanks very much. And uh, I think, Asha, I think what you've started is kind of like a response to what women want today. Could you please tell us, for those who don't yet know about uh, Find Your Mojo, t tell us what is it about and why you created it? Sure. Um, okay, so um, I'm really excited to, to talk about this because um, this is something that uh, really triggered my departure from the corporate world after 17 years. Um, and when I, early this year, when I uh, took the plunge and left the corporate, um, I decided to, I was, I was kind of feeling that, that, that emptiness, you know, or rather the, the search for my why. Now, how many of you here have heard of the term ikigai? Yeah? So, yeah, so you know, you know the, the term ikigai? It's a, a Japanese term which pretty much summarizes, you know, what is your, I mean, what, what are you passionate about, right? And what do you love doing and how can you actually contribute back doing what you love to the greater world, right? So that's just a summary of it. So I was not able to actually point my finger and, and, and really connect with what is my why and why am I doing what I'm doing until um, I got into the entrepreneurial uh, journey and I started sort of like really reflecting upon um, how do I actually give back to the community? And I'm very passionate about being a woman. Um, you know, I'm, I'm actually very f passionate about um, wanting to really inspire, motivate, and also uplift, you know, my fellow uh, women. And being a single mother, um, so I have an 11-year-old daughter, and uh, I usually travel with her right now, uh, I've, been, I've been a single mom for the last five years, and uh, so since then, I've been taking my daughter with me on this journey, you know, and we make it a point that because I was in a full-time job, I was not able to really um, do a lot of traveling, but, uh, you know, we would take like maybe two big trips a year, um, and then we'll do some, some mini getaways uh, in between. Um, so in, in quest of uh, searching for my why, I decided to... Um, take a, a one month uh, break to go to Spain um, in, in, in search of, you know, what is my mojo and what is my why. And I um, decided to join a bunch of women there in Spain. Twelve different women came from, we convened from all over, you know, different parts of the world, um, different, you know, basically from all walks of life. Uh, we had one common denominator. And that's basically we were all aspiring to be entrepreneurs and to make a difference in the world. Um, so that's how about you know this this whole find your mojo um, 
concept or the theme actually came about. So from the retreat, it was a 10 days retreat in a lovely place called Bagur in Spain. Um, you know, um, we had this, this beach area in Costa Brava. Uh, we were having brainstormings and we were literally talking about strengths and areas where we could support each other. Um, and that happened in, in May. And let me tell you that we're still very closely connected through WhatsApp group. Um, and we share small wins, you know, anything to celebrate. Anyone who's feeling, you know, waking up this morning and feeling not so great, we will, you know, just sort of like put a message in the group. And everybody, you know, chips in. And regardless of the time zones, we are all from different time zones, everybody would actually try to lift one another. You know, and I thought that was a great thing to do. So when I came back after one month from Spain, you know, I was like here at a very high altitude, you know, almost like being in the aircraft. And after one week, I felt like, oh my God, it was such a drop, right? Because I felt like I was missing my tribe. I felt like, you know, I, I had nobody who could actually connect with my, uh, the thing that I was doing. People kept telling me like, are you nuts? You quit a high profile job from the corporate and you're just sort of like bumming around. So excuse me, <laughs> bumming around. Like they could not relate to what I was doing. Here I am, you know, having this big vision board and uh, trying to see how I can actually, you know, make a difference. It doesn't matter to, you know, I think the numbers are not essential, but if I'm able to make a difference to one person's life, I think that in itself, it's such a huge achievement and fulfillment for me. Hence, um, I um, decided to launch this Find Your Mojo VIP retreat. I brought together 12 women in Malaysia who came on board, who believed in this vision that I had. Um, and we launched that Find Your Mojo retreat last September. We picked a lovely, lovely spot in Dusun, in Suramban, this lovely resort in Dusun. And it was a three days, two nights, fully immersive program where um, we had topics, you know, it's basically an all-encompassing um, theme where we touched upon, I think the important thing to, to really start on is your mindset, right? Anything that you want to change starts from mindset. So we talked about growth mindset, we talked about uh, if you're aspiring to be an entrepreneur, if you want to, like you've been thinking about, you know, I really want to... Um, exit, you know, my job, I want to quit my job and I want to do something different. I, you know, I think entrepreneur or female preneurs or women preneurs, I think there's like, you know, the jargons are just, you know, increasing these days. Uh, and I want to be a digital nomad, right? I just want to travel. I want to be a nomad. So it gives me location independent. I can wake up this morning and work, you know, b by the beach. I can uh, literally be anywhere in the world, right? So, that was basically behind um, the, the whole reason for putting Find Your Mojo together. So Find Your Mojo Retreat, in a way, is answering women's call for travel um, in, by, putting it, by combining career or reflection on career and life right. into a travel plan. Absolutely, right. Okay. So if you say, like, you know, I know so many people, um, and I'm talking about, like, uh, these are friends, you know, who've, who've uh, literally, we've been friends for so long. In order for them to actually say, yes, let's go, right? That's like almost never happens, right? We'll be planning and planning and planning, but the execution part, <laughs> how many of you here are guilty before you decide to travel, you would say like, oh, I have to check with my husband, right? I have to see whether the kids are sorted. I have to check whether my nanny is available, Tell my ya. mom is av available, my mother-in-law is available, right? But the men, right, they hardly ever think about, when they are planning, right, they hardly ever think about, oh, I have to check with my wife. <laughs> or I have to, you know, even a girl's night out, right? I mean, many of us here are guilty of that, right? So if, like, if we want to have a girl's night out, I was like, oh, I have to ask my husband. Yes. And, and to add to that, someone in this room, someone sitting in this room said to me, uh, when we were going to have our girls' night out yesterday, she said, I feel guilty because my husband hardly goes out and I keep going out. <laughs> that, that's my sister sitting in this room. <laughs> um, Eliza, would you, because you, you work with Zafigo now, and mm -hmm. we know, we all know that Zafigo puts in a lot of, you know, tips and concrete 
uh, travel stories and tips in order to empower women to travel. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that you guys are doing that we don't know yet about? <laughs> uh, maybe maybe we're not aware of, you think? Um, for right now, nothing that I can give away, uh -huh. just like that, without, <laughs> you know, authorization <laughs> from Marina next con and James. Next and conference. <laughs> next conference, for sure. Um, but in terms of the, the content that we put out, we try to make sure the content is as useful as it is interesting. Because, um, you know, when it comes to interesting content, that's, that's easy to find. But if it's something that's useful to women who want to travel, who want to, um, you know, make their way in this world off the beaten track, we want to be able to give you as much information as possible, you know, whether it's pertaining to um, safety, security, uh, you know, getting there, accommodation, just anything and everything to do with you being able to get out. We want we want to make sure that it's useful to to every level of woman, you know, regardless of background, upbringing, age, um, you know, uh, race, accessibility, like financial status, whatever it is. Um, so, yeah, like that's that's you know what we do in terms of content, you know. But also we make sure that the stories are authentic. I mean, they, it doesn't have to be hundred percent your experience, you know. Like we welcome contributions from everybody and anybody. So if anybody in this room has a story that they would like to tell, you don't have to be, um, you know, a brilliant writer stuff. Like that's that's my job. Like you send me your stories and you know I clean it up. I don't change it. I just I clean it up, I make sure that it's in line with our voice and our um, our look and feel, basically. And then, you know, I put your story out there. But it's entirely your own. You know, your voice is still retained. Your experience is still retained. You know, it is what it is and everything's there. But we make sure that we put your story out. So if, uh, yeah, just, you know, a side note. If anybody has any stories, pictures that they would like to share, you can always drop me an email. It's editor at zafigo.com. Um, you know, even if you have an idea for a story, you can run it by me and we, you know, I, I can help you expand your story. You may not be the best storyteller, but you might have photographs that, you know, depict your, your trip, your adventure, your escapade, and we can do something that's a little bit more picture driven as opposed to, you know, story driven as well. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. I noticed that you've mentioned along with Lavinia, you know, it's the, this idea of security and safety. Uh, you both reiterate that fact. Um, and Lavinia talked about how, w what's the hotel that has the women's only Marriott. floor? JW Marriott. Yeah, the, the JW Marriott. But uh, I, I have to respectfully disagree with these uh, implementations because I think the industry puts in place things that they they think we want. Uh, but they're not necessarily things we want. They don't research our needs and our wants. And um, just out of curiosity and for a bit of play here, I'd like you now to take a moment to think about what is it you want in terms of tangible, concrete stuff, right? So at the end of this session, I want you to shout out to us what is it that you want? Concrete stuff. When you go to a hotel, what do you want to see? What do you want? When you go out with your friends, what do you want to see? What do you want? When you travel to a place, what do you want to see? What, where, what? At the airport, in the hotel, what is it you want? Is that right? Right. So as you're sitting there at the back of your mind, try to think, and then we shout out all these. Just to just to have a have a play of, you know, whether they are providing these for us because. In my research with women and travel, uh, when we talk about safety and security, we found that women don't want to stay on women-only floors because you are now putting all of us on this one floor and telling the whole world that we are on this floor. That's very safe. <laughs> Thank so you very much. <laughs> So, yeah, so I, I think the industry implementations and what we want, the, there is a gap and there is no match. But uh, let's move on a little bit and then we'll come back to your answers at the end of this session, if that's all right. Um, maybe with back to Lavinia, like what kind of travel experiences um, is Expedia providing for today's women 
you know, that you have seen, or, or, are you, or if you haven't yet implemented it, what, what are you thinking of doing? Yeah, what have you implemented and what are you thinking of implementing? I think um, with, with Expedia, we're online and we're digitally connected. Um, and, and in today's world, there's no information that you cannot find online. Um, no matter like if you're traveling to somewhere, um, you know, the, the, the timing it would take for you to get to the airport, what sort of uh, facilities the airport provides, uh, food options, accommodations, currency, anything that you want, you can find online. So there's, n there's no excuse to that. Our job at Expedia is to make it easy for you to travel um, and, and that you leave the, the hassle free of uh, booking for travel to us. So we, we take away the stress of, of traveling and we want to make it easy for you. What we do for travelers, and this is not in, in, um, in specific to, to women only, uh, we just want to ensure that you have the opportunity to travel, you have the access to travel. Asia did a good job of making that their motto that now everyone can travel and they lived it. They ensured that we m they made um, travel you know, um, cost effective, um, that anyone in Asia had the access to travel. And, and for companies like Expedia, we're American, we're based, uh, we're landscaped across uh, globally in 75 countries and we have a great presence here in Malaysia. Our job is to ensure that we look at what Malaysians want when they travel and we provide that, whether it's uh, cost-effective travel, where, whether it's destinations that Malaysians want to travel to, uh, the experience you're looking for, um, um, the cost, of course, it's, 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 uh, it's a huge uh, factor to Malaysians, uh, that we look into all those factors and we provide that whether or not you're, you're w male or female. Um, and that's our job to do that. And that's why she is Asia's greatest chief marketing officer. <laughs> have been nice to have, uh, we, we were supposed to have Michelle Capriki from uh, who is the MD, who is the Managing um, Director for St. Regis Langkawi, but um, she, she couldn't join us here today, but it would be, it would have been interesting to hear from her as well in terms of what hotels are providing for, for women, right? Yeah. But um, Asha, would you like to add to that? Yes, yeah, so um I'm also trying to actually explore a little bit as to you know um, how can we make travel more interesting. So uh, through personal experiences, so when I travel, uh, I always connect with the locals, and I think that's the best way of seeing a place, right? To connect with locals, and I've also consciously uh, I'm adding that into the itinerary as I build um, find your mojo. So we're having the next retreat is in Sapa in Vietnam. Um, and in between the workshops and masterclasses, I'm sort of like also um, adding uh, a mastermind hike with the locals, you know, so you get to really connect with the locals, you understand the flavors, the, you know, the food, the, the local delicacies, um, and, you know, what, what do they as locals, you know, and, and sort of like really uh, put yourself in and live in that, or rather bring yourself to connect and, and see how they live their life for the entire duration that uh, uh, we run this program. So uh, definitely, you know, the local touch is something that I'm consciously trying to, to build into the itinerary of Fanya Mojo. Thanks. Eliza, you have compiled so much information for us, so there must be stuff in there that you can tell us about, you know, what do people write about? What do they talk about? What do they highlight most about their travel experiences? Women, that is. Um, one thing that, back to this again, but one thing that a lot of women actually write to us about is, uh, a safety breach or like you know a, a security risk that they've experienced while on the road uh, but you know um, most times the stories that we get they're not really ab about how these women have you know broken down or oh, we don't want to travel anymore like I'm scared I'm this and that it's, it's usually how um, they found it themselves p particularly because they've been they, they were alone most times on their trip um, how they just decided to pick themselves up and um, you know, carry on with, with their journey and it didn't put them off traveling, um, you know, anywhere else after that. But something else that we get is um, women, are the, the stories that we get are, are about women who travel to places that people don't really go to. 
you know, it's like a small fishing village. We had one story uh, of this lady who went to stay in a small fishing village in China. Uh, it was on a river. And apparently the people in this village are the last of their kind to do to fish in a, in a certain way. They have a certain method that they use. And so she stayed with them for a week and, you know, she watched them uh, fish in their, their special way and their way of life and the things that they eat and stuff like that. So um, a lot of stories that we get are actually women who want to tell the world about this particular place that you don't really see on Instagram or you don't really read about on websites that is just as beautiful, is just as interesting, you learn just as much, um, you know, you, you basically you have one of those rare experiences that not many people have. Um, but also having said that, funny enough, as many um, unique stories as we get, there still aren't enough women who want to, they, they, they read the stories and they're like, wow, this is amazing, this is inspiring, like this is great. But then when you ask them, like, do you, would you do this? They're like, no, like I, I wanna go stay at the Four Star, I wanna go stay at the Hilton or at the Marriott, you know? Like um, I wouldn't slum it, I wouldn't, you know, do living in the village and, you know, it's stilts and, and bamboo and, you know, having to trek eight hours through a jungle just to get to this one place. They don't want to do all that. But so, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping that the stories that we put out, uh, you know, because when I read them, I can't lie, I'm actually one of those people. I'm like, oh my God, this is great. But I wouldn't trek eight hours, you know? Because <laughs> like, I'm the kind of person, like, I get a manicure before I go wherever I go. <laughs> So I'm thinking like my, my white nails are gonna you know be yellow or be brown. I'm just like ah oh, you know, but but you know the the new year is coming up and I'm actually thinking to myself like I want to do something that I never thought I would do. You know my my 20 year old self who never thought I would do. Uh, my friends and my family would never look at me and think oh yeah yeah she would do that. But uh, okay well I haven't actually said this but I guess I'll, I'll say it now. Um, something I want to do for myself next year on my birthday in June is climb Mount Kinabalu, you know, which is, which is something that, honestly, if I, if I told my dad right now, my dad would be like, right, and then he'd just walk away, because he's like, I'm not listening to this, like, no, this is, you know, this is not me, but um, it's, it's part of something that I've been doing this year, I've been stepping out of my comfort zone, I've been doing um, a lot of things for myself this year to kind of improve myself mentally, physically, I've been doing a lot of reading, a lot of reflecting, you know, um, I lost 14 kilos, in a span of like four months. So I'm thinking if I can do all that, things that I never thought, like my 20 year old self never thought I could do, I can definitely do the mountains, right? I can definitely do Mount, Mount Kinabalu next year. So um, yeah, you know, I, I, as an editor, like the stories that I choose, and, and I'm very discerning about the stories, like we get contributors and, and you know, if you write in and if we send you a rejection, it's not because, you know, your, your story is bad or like, you know, it's, oh, it's just boring or whatever, but I want the best stories so that we give people a little bit more to think about. We want them to do, go beyond thinking and move into doing. So as an editor, I think I need to do that myself. So, <laughs> you know, so I'm <laughs> about to do that and uh, yeah. So Sorry, can I just add to that? Yeah. Um, so I just want to also probably just throw out, you know, some suggestions and ideas uh, to you guys. Um, so instead of staying in hotels, um, have you considered staying in homestays? Right, because I think that personally, I think in the last two years, uh, when I travel, I always look for homestays. Right, I think uh, that's actually a great opportunity to learn uh, about the particular place, the culture, and uh, how the locals actually live life. Right, and I think um, now that I actually get my my daughter to travel with me, um, and for for parents here, if you have kids and you plan to travel with your children. Um, so we're planning to go to Portugal in, in December. Um, now the first thing I, I told my daughter, because I wanted to set expectations, right? She's probably thinking that, or she used to, but not, not anymore, she knows how her mom thinks now. Um, so she, instead of um, you know, taking your kids to, checking in into a, a, a lavish posh hotel, I told her, you know what? We're actually gonna work on this holiday, right? So she's gonna go out to the farms. Um, she's gonna help pick berries and cherries and, you know, and, and, and help the couple, uh, the po you know, Portuguese couple, uh, who actually produces wine in the winery, right? And then she's going to feed the cows. She's going to, you know, help uh, look after the horses there. Uh, and I think that is going to be a game changer when you start giving these experiences to your kids, 
right? So we're not going to stay in posh hotels. Uh, we're actually going to live in and work during this holiday. And she goes like, what? <laughs> but yeah, so you know, this is something for you to, to think about as well. Lavinia, you um, might yeah. as well yeah, put in I your own like personal yes, um, experiences in there. I was just going to add on to what um, Eliza touched on, on um, exper authentic experience, which is quite unique to the millennials today, the, the new age of Instagrammers. Um, we recently launched a campaign in Malaysia called uh, Don't Tell Mark, like do something and don't tell your mother about it. So we asked, um, we asked Malaysians to write in about things that you have done uh, where it's related to travel and your mother didn't know about. Uh, for instance, if you traveled to New Zealand and you did a bungee jumping or you jumped off a plane or, you know. Uh, so something crazy that would, you know, that would send your mom's heart um, racing, uh, but you didn't tell her and you did it. And, you know, we were, it was just surprising to see how many um, young Malaysians today, teenagers, um, working um, um, executives, uh, write in with all these crazy adventures that they have done that you never would have thought they did. Um, and also, you know, young couples, you know, wives who don't tell their husbands about what trip they're going for. <laughs> legit trips, I would say, legit trips. But actually go and do it because it's a, it's a sense of fulfillment. You set goals for yourself. Um, a lot of us have uh, a bucket list for travel that we want to do before we, we, we hit certain milestones. Um, and, and so there's, um, there's no stopping you. Go and, go and do what you want to do. The, you own your own agenda. Uh, you plan for your travel. It's all in your hands and, and do what you want to do. So be adventurous about it. Um, and you, you said something about um, authenticity and that's what millennials want. They, they don't want where everyone goes. And in the new age of millennials, they're not on Facebook anymore. So everything's on Instagram, right? Because my mom and dad are on Facebook. I don't want them to know. It's so uncool having your, your, your mom yeah, and dad comment yeah. on photos, right? So they go on, on Instagram. And so Instagram has this um, a great potential on influencing people about travel because they put this picture up and they just have to tag the location um, and everyone wants to do that, yep. right? Everyone wants to go to that location and take that same picture and put it up because I want to have a sense of influencing my followers that I've done it. Yep. Um, so that's the, the power of travel. Um, but just going back to my point of, you know, owning your own agenda and doing what you want and just do it. Yeah. Mm. You, that Don't Tell Mark campaign is awesome. <laughs> Well, we, when we interviewed women about travel, we had women tell us that, you know what, that don't tell Mark thing? Mark didn't know I went traveling solo. <laughs> Mark thought that I went with Linda or, or City. <laughs> um, but it, what Eliza brought up was also very interesting, I thought. She, you talked about, you know, women wanting to be, s to be safe. They want to feel safe. And yet, they also want to travel to the most remotest, rarest location. Yeah. Um, but then you, there is a conundrum because the most remotest places do not have facility. Uh, and this is one question I want to throw at you. Is the facility important, as important as the destination? Because we got to be realistic about these things. Yeah? Men can travel to these places, they can sleep on forest floors, uh, but we feel like we deserve more than sleeping on forest floors sometimes, right? So, um, and I think people say, you know, toughen up, do it, but we are told to toughen up because we are f listening to the discourse that have been created for men Right, so c can we travel? Can we tra can we not travel differently from men? I've just returned from a six-day trekking trip in Nepal, and it was beautiful. It was truly beautiful. I enjoyed the hike. It was grueling, and I would love to go back again to Everest Base Camp, but when I think about the toilet. I just couldn't bring myself to do it again. Honestly, like that, like that's my thing. Like the bathrooms, yeah. I just like if, like okay, I'll do a, a a hostel, like a backpackers hostel. Like fine, I'll I'll do it. But the thought of having to share a bathroom with people, like people that I don't know, you know I'm just like, oh my god, that's like horrific. And women have different standards from men. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not that we're not tough. It's just standards. That's right. Yeah. And 
And we also have the unfortunate, the unfortunate wand that nature has put upon us called the menstruation cycle. Mm, yes. So, you know, uh, so I would, again, if there is any media <laughs> around, you know, tell the hotel, the, the tourism providers, uh, you know, s stop asking us to toughen up and provide us with the things that we want and we need when we travel. And we're not asking for luxury or five star, but decency. Decency, when you're having your period, you cannot, you cannot be putting blood on a piece of leaf <laughs> in the middle of the night where you can't even see if there's a snake. <laughs> and why don't you put your blood? <laughs> right? So it's, it's decency, really, we're talking. We're not talking about luxury. We're not s that spoiled that we can't go to mountains and sleep in with people, yeah? Yay for that. <laughs> um, is, are there any more, con like, you know, this is what I'm talking about, concrete provisions. Are there, do you think there are any more concrete provisions that we should be putting in place for women that, is, that are not yet out there? Any one of you can, can answer this question. I think uh, um, we'd like to probably see something from the Ministry you know, of Tourism. Um, and if they can actually really drive the agenda forward uh, and taking proactive steps in terms of really providing for women to travel. Um, I think the, the big um, taboo is always about safety, right? Uh, and I think that has been implanted into our minds. Uh, but I, I, I do believe that it is basically a lot of um, what, what goes out there in the media, right? Sometimes. Uh, an incident which is literally, you know, a small incident gets exaggerated and expo exploited and, and, and that's how people tend to really believe, you know, about a particular um, uh, area or particular, you know, place where they feel like, you know, for example, India, right, uh, with the number of rape cases that we've, we've, hear we've, we've heard and we've, we're still hearing about, right, um, and, and now suddenly, uh, people say, oh, it, I don't want to go to India anymore because it's not safe. So it's sort of like just generalizing it and coming to a conclusion uh, based on one or two incidences. But then again, we really don't know the full story of what truly happened. Mm. Was it, you know, um, uh, what were the triggers or, you know, what actually provoked those incidences, right? Uh, but I think, yeah, I would love to really see, um, you know, the, the Ministry of Tourism really sort of like driving this agenda forward. And I think uh, many companies then can also follow suit in terms of building travel as part of a reward and retention uh, program or plan in, in the respective companies. Mm. Asha, you'd be happy to know that Lavinia was just talking to the ministry just a few yeah, just days I ago. Mean just two, awesome. weeks ago, two weeks ago. Um, and I'll add to that. Um, one of the studies that Expedia conducts every year is uh, a vacation deprivation study. So we look at, and we so do say this that again? vacation deprivation. Vacation <laughs> deprivation. <laughs> so we, we conduct this globally, and we look at why people are not utilizing their annual leave. So we, we look at the number of public holidays provided in the country versus the, um, the, the national standard of um, uh, annual leave that you get um, for, for um, an average employer. Most times it's 14 days, I think you start with, and then that sort of grows over the years. Um, and, and also why people are not using their vacation. Like you're entitled to it, your annual leave. Some people will save it year-end holiday, and then you, you spill over to the next year. Uh, but why, you know, so the role of employees, why are you not utilizing your leave? And the ro role of the employers, why are you not encouraging your employees to take leave? Yeah. Um, and so year on year, Malaysia c usually comes out in the top five of most deprived country for vacation uh, in the region, in Asia Pacific. Um, at, at a global standard, you will have um, a country like Korea um, or Taiwan, because in these countries, the, the, the employees have this sense of FOMO, you know, fear of, fear of missing out at work. So if I go on holiday, I'm missing out on a promotion I could potentially get. So you know what? I don't go on holiday. I'm just going to work my ass off and, you know, get, get the job done. Um, so it, sometimes it's a cultural aspect. 
Uh, sometimes it's the mentality of the employees. And I don't understand why when employees go on leave, they come back and you're given that sense of guilt that you've been on way, or you've been on holiday, you missed out on this, or you, know, you haven't got the job done. So for, for uh, managers in the room, or if you come from um, in the, the HR field, uh, look into this. So we speak to ministries. We actually yeah. speak to the, the manpower uh, ministries, human resources ministries, to sort of you know, look at employee well-being as an important factor at work. Um, you know, uh, um, a happy employer is a, is a productive employer, and they can then give more at work. So look at that right balance uh, and give time off, and they're entitled to it. So encourage them. Don't make them feel guilty for taking the time off. Uh, so this study is, is one of our um, annual studies. We've been doing this more than 20 years globally, um, and it's one of the, the studies that usually comes out really shocking. Um, Malaysia has improved over the years, I have to say. Usually around the top five, we've improved. Um, and some of the factors that Malaysian actually don't take leave. And actually, you're blessed with a lot of public holidays. So, and I live in uh, Singapore now. I'm Malaysian. I live in Singapore, and I cringe because we don't get a lot of holidays um, in Singapore. Um, so, so take your leaves. You're entitled to it. You know, don't let anyone let you down there um, and utilize it. And, and, and so the message to employers here is think about employee well-being because you get a more productive uh, can, work, workforce. Can, can you also talk to the Ministry of Health so that they can <laughs> diagnose vacation deprivation as an actual sickness? Um, you know what, when we conduct the studies, we actually bring in uh, clinical psychologists to, to yeah. give that, that view, like what actually happens to your body and mental well-being when you don't go on holiday, right? Yeah. So what happens to your body to that? And oh, there's a view on that. Just picking up on that, like... Um, These people are taking over my role, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, just picking up on that. Um, I, when I was working at Clio, the company itself, I was given 18 days a year um, for leave in my first year. Um, and in the second year, the accumulated leave within the first, because you know you have to finish uh, last year's leave by like three months or whatever's brought forward, right? I had 30 days in addition to the 18 from the new year because I had 12 days brought forward and the six days that I did take from the previous year was basically just um, emergency leave days that I needed to go get an errand done or get something done. They wouldn't actually leave. So for the three plus years that I was at Clio, I didn't have, I didn't get any vacation time. I didn't get any downtime. I was working weekends. I was working public holidays. Um, and you're right, it's vacation deprivation. And it came to a point where I was just like, am I even allowed? There was a sense of guilt, you know, to go, on vacation. Back when I was working in advertising, something that we used to do as a joke, but also to guilt trip our colleagues who actually did take time off and go to work, was if somebody had the audacity to go on leave, we would use saran wrap, um, cling wrap, and wrap up their entire desk. <laughs> Chairs, uh, computer, table, uh, you know, shelf space, whatever. The one thing that we did to one colleague was we removed all the keys from her keyboard, wrapped each key in one big sheet of newspaper, and then... I, I don't think <laughs> I can allow you to continue talking about this. <laughs> because this is exactly the thing we want to avoid. <laughs> oh yeah. And then ball it up and then put it in a big box. And then when she came back, she literally had to unwrap every single piece of paper to make sure that none of her keys were missing and then assemble the keyboard back again, unwrap everything, yeah, basically, like, we, like, you know, it was something that we did. Like, we made our colleagues feel guilty for having the audacity to go on holiday. <laughs> so, yeah. And then there was also that backward fear, like, oh, my God, if I took leave, I would, you know, be... Ple please don't do this at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, last, one last question to all the panelists before yeah. we open it up for questions and answers is... Are sub-segments important within women travellers? Are sub-segments important? So are we talking about age groups? Are we, are we talking about um, you know, ethnicity groups? Are we talking about interest groups? Are they important within the women travel group? Yeah. Do they want different things? They, they definitely yeah. do. Definitely do. I mean, di different demographics um, have different ways of planning for travel. When, it, you know, when you plan for travel, you start with the with the dreaming phase and you get into the inspiration phase and then you're researching, you're planning, you're booking and then you actually go for your travel. So 
in that whole stage of planning for travel, there are different decisions that you make along the way, and that's d depending on your age group, whether you're a single mother, you're, you're a parent, um, or, or male and female also make very d uh, different decisions. Um, and for us, we're always thinking about everything, right? It's, it's my, will, will this be great for my children? Will this be great? But for the men, they just like, let's just book it. I'll just give you my credit card, just book it. You know, like, why is it taking you so long? But, but, but it's just that there's a lot of decision that needs to be made. So I would say yes. Yeah, I think so too. Because um, looking at the, the kind of stories that we get, like older women look for different kind of experiences as opposed to younger women. Younger women want to cliff dive and bungee jump into rivers and you know, do different things. But older women want to um, explore, like they want to, you know, see cities that they read about when they were younger. They, they, you know, they finally have the time, they finally have the money, the kids are out of the house, the husbands finally left them alone, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So they're like, okay, so I can go do whatever I want. And, you know, they, they um, yeah, so they actually look for different experiences and different memories and stuff like that, yeah. Asha? Who um, are you? Okay, so Which segment are you catering to? Probably have a very uh, different mindset here. So I personally feel that no. Um, I think you, when you have the desire and the opportunity to travel, and you just do it, right? Um, surprisingly, when I was in Spain and I, I visited um, the city called uh, Sevilla or Seville, um, I had, um, so I, I, I signed up for this flamenco classes, right? Um, and I had, I was very surprised to see that they were 80-year-olds there learning how to dance flamenco. And let me tell you, and if you think that the Indian traditional dance, uh, we call it Bharatanatyam, uh, if that is a difficult and challenging you think, now flamenco is probably three times harder than that, right? Um, there were 80-year-old women, you know, a part of the, of the class and doing stuff that, you know, what a 20-year-old would do. So I think it's very much, it's very subjective here and it, it boils down to basically your mindset, mm. right? Um, what is it that you're looking for? If you're looking for just traveling um, to go to the hotel and just park yourself in there and, you know, go to fancy restaurants and dine out, um, then to me, that, that's not what traveling is all about, right? It's basically... You know, you're, you're exploring and, and discovering the unbeaten parts, you know, uh, the rough and tough, you know, and, and basically I love adventure. And um, so when it comes to that, I don't think age really matters. And I would love to break down the, the gender binary when it comes to traveling, what a man can do and what a female can do. Um, I don't think there should be any uh, segregation or distinguishing uh, factors there. Thank you. I'm glad to see some differing opinions there. Uh, we'll open it up to the floor right now. But before that, can I please go back to my earlier question? Have you shout out some answers as to what you want when you travel? Anyone? As loud as you can. <laughs> eh? No single supplement. Great. Anything else? No single supplement. Yes. Talking to local people. Okay. <coughs> right. Okay. Okay, so perhaps uh, just to go around the room, uh, quick answers as in like one sentence answers. So uh, local culture, getting to know the people in the, in the city that you travel with, no single supplement, what else? Yes, 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 yes. No? <laughs> yeah, yeah, at the back, hot showers, thank you very much. <laughs> Say that again? Eco-friendly. Yes. Travel guides for idiots. Travel guide <laughs> for idiots. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Clean rooms, yes. Clean toilets. Say that again. Good food, yes. Decent transportation. Toilet paper, anyone? <laughs> Local markets, yeah. Anything else? No harassment, thank you very much. Local context, great. Like 
the minimum that's what Zafigo does, right? Yeah, the minimum of what we should and shouldn't do in some countries. Yeah. Uh, cheaper travels, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Great, great. So, so these are some of the things we hear we are hearing, right? So uh, are they are, are they there? Are th when we go to these to, to places, when we travel, do we get clean rooms? Do we get toilets? Do we get working toilets? Do we get do we get no single supplements, oftentimes not, unless we pay and we go to decent hotels, right? So why, why is it not more widespread? Um, thank, you for your, thank you for your answers. Can we now? Well, I'm going to open the, the floor now to questions. Yeah, it's by uh, Himadri Garg, who um, actually has a, uh, like she and her sister Prachi, they actually do uh, travels, they travel around India and uh, they've actually won awards from like the Gujarati like tourism board and like um, TV stations and stuff like that for the work that they're doing to promote tourism in India because um, According to them, contrary to what we've heard in the news, you know, in in, uh, in media and everything, it actually is safe. It actually is um, possible for women to travel um, in India. So yeah. Have you got a question? Okay. Can we put? Uh, yes, thank you. Hi. Could you uh, please uh, stand up and let everyone see you, who you are, and then say <laughs> what I your name is, that. where you're from, so that we can we can approach you during I'm break Ivy. time and talk to you. So, hi, I'm Ivy. I'm from Patalang Jaya. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Women's whatever. You. Anyway, I'm Ivy. Uh, I was just thinking, you know, going back to the title of what do women want when they travel? A very good friend of mine uh, just told me very recently that I'm burnt out. And I think what we're not addressing is that women are exhausted, you know? Because even when you said earlier on that uh, women are doing the booking, and I was immediately curious about, are they booking for themselves? Are they booking for the family? Are they booking for the partners? And then when they go on travel, they also have to worry about the partner, their children, and all that. And I think we need to address the fact that we need to recognize that we are exhausted. We don't think we are, because we're supposed to be super women. And so I would like when I, so I want like, you know, travel trips about, you know, how do I get away from the family when I'm in holiday? <laughs> you know, where are the nearest massages? Where are the nearest little nooks and corners? I mean, to address that, you know, because I think we don't realize it ourselves because we don't like to tell ourselves that we are actually really tired, you know? And so, yeah, I think we need to have that kind of like eke it out, you know, um, and, and tell us, give us all those tips because it's okay to go away and, and, and just be, uh, and to, how to relax. No, that, that and not constantly keep carrying and carrying and carrying and carrying and carrying. Yeah, thank you, Ivy. Ivy, thank yeah. you very much. Did you want? Did you want anyone to answer that question, no, no, or is it more a comment? comment. Uh, uh, have you guys? Do you guys? Do you have answers? I think uh, you know. Besides doing family trips, uh, it's really important for you to do solo trips as well, and that's exactly when you would be able to like have your me time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is so important yeah. to um, refresh, recharge, and rejuvenate. So I do take uh, solo travels uh, throughout the, uh, the year, and I would allocate maybe two solo travels for myself. Um, and I, I, f I believe that these uh, you know, solo travels are really important for you. If you are passionate about traveling, the last thing you want is actually go on a trip feeling exhausted and coming back like as if yeah. you, know, you need another holiday from a holiday, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add to that. Um, there, there is a latest, latest trend now that a lot of um, travelers do the staycation, right? Because they, they want to break away from their, their daily routine. Um, but I have a family, I have kids and all of that. So I do a staycation. I just book myself into a nearest hotel down the street um, and get my massage, spend a night and come back. And that's a rising trend in Asia. Because Asians in general are very used to traveling with their family. They don't leave anyone behind. They bring the mother-in-law, the in-laws family, and then the entire village ends up yeah. coming with you, <laughs> right? And so then it, it, it's, it's on your responsibility to start planning. And then among us, we have the OCD planners that need yeah. to take control of the agenda, 
or the ones that are very chin chai, so I'll do anything. And then among your family, like dietary requirements, I cannot eat this, I don't want to eat in that coffee shop, I only have to go to clean restaurants and all of that, and that's when the stress builds up. Yeah. So treat yourself to a staycation. You go book yourself in a nice hotel, have a relaxing, have a cocktail by the pool, or just sit and read a book, um, and just detach from the world, do a yeah. staycation if you have to. Switch off your phones. Yeah. <laughs> But um, like Ivy said, you know, like the tips, like you said, you know, you want people to give tips and stuff like that. Um, coming from a publishing background, the tips are there every year, you know. Every January issue, it is how you recharge and rejuvenate and, and refresh yourself. It's take time away and, you know, the, the, all the tips have been given. But sometimes I think as women with all these responsibilities that we have, it's whether or not we can let go. That's one thing that we have to learn how to do ourselves. Like, like no amount of like tips and comments and advice from anybody can actually, you know, um, make you want to really just let go and not think about it yourself. So I think that's a lot. That's a, a problem that a lot of women face. I think my mom's the same way as well. You know, she she's like, yeah, I want to solo travel. She's in Kerala by herself, but still like, uh, you know, uh, is is your sister okay? Is your brother okay? Is your dad this? Is your da -da -da? can you check up on your grandma? Can you? I'm like, ma, just enjoy your, your boat ride on the river, like, you know, that kind of thing. So I think a lot of times it's whether the women choose to let go as yeah. well. Yeah. Last year at Zafigo X, last year I talked about how we should learn how to kill guilt or nip guilt in the butt but before, before we, we travel. Um, so maybe next year, James, we can bring my mom back as a speaker because she's very good at doing that. She's like, right, I'm off. And then you never get to contact her for the next few. <laughs> um, any other questions from the floor? Yes, right at the back. Um, perhaps you can, would you would you like to take a few steps forward so yeah, we can you're see you? You are in the dark. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, I've uh, I've solo traveled before. Uh, wait, wait. Ha your name is uh, Amira. My name Amira. Is Amira. Amira. So I've solo traveled before uh, for the first time, and I've noticed I have a hu uh, a huge problem. I can get socially awkward sometimes. So usually I go to eateries alone. Sometimes I would join um, certain groups to certain places, go sightseeing and everything. But you get that sense of loneliness sometimes. And how do you deal with it? How, do, How you do you get through the the feeling of oh, okay, well, everyone have their partners, and I'm like alone. Okay. Um, how old are you, Amira? Uh, twenty seven. Okay. No, I know. I ask. I ask because you know um, what I'm going to tell you is that um, I've done a bit of solo traveling myself, and I find like the easiest way, as as CD as this sounds, I know some of you may be like, what? Tinder. No, but 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 not but not for the obvious reasons. You know, not for the obvious reasons. But I promise you, dating apps actually work. But um, you have to set very clear boundaries. Cause I'm I'm a bit like you. Like, cause um, I mean, I might I might seem outspoken and social and stuff like. But if it's um, in a new setting, I'm actually very introverted. I'm very quiet, and it takes me a while to actually get comfortable with people. But Tinder actually helps. For example, like when I was in Munich last year, I was there for over a month by myself, um, and I was like, you know, like I want to see the city, you know, but I want to go beyond what you know, is, is on TripAdvisor and, and every other website. So I was like, okay, fine, you know, I'm going to get on Tinder, but I'm going to make it clear that I'm looking for a guide, you know? And then, I mean, of course, you, you get matches and the guides are like, oh, are you only looking for a guide? Yes, I'm only <laughs> looking for a guide, you know? But if you're out with this guy and you know, anything else transpires, that's on you, that's fine, that's a plus. But <laughs> I... You know, give or take. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, like if, if you feel uncomfortable in a group or, or you feel it's hard for you to connect with a big group of people, find somebody that you can do it with one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be Tinder or Bumble or whatever. Like you can go, you know, maybe there are websites or Facebook groups that you can find somebody to do that to. But um, yeah, that's, that's, you know, easy. I mean, also you get a partner who wants to do things that you want to do, you know, somebody who enjoys maybe the same type of food or, or they know the good spots. Like, you, you know, you, you put it out there that you're looking for a foodie and they're like, hey, yeah, I'll take you to the best spots in, in the town. And, you know, they take you out to restaurants or they know all the cool stuff to do because sometimes you want to do the things that locals do, you know. 
and yeah, I think like t Tinder can work. Uh, from experience, I'm, I'm talking to you from experience, yeah, so. It's great when we get unconventional ideas like that. Yeah. Uh, can we give Marina a, a mic, please? A mic, yeah. Uh, one of the aims of... Can you please uh, introduce uh, yourself to the... <laughs> <laughs> I already did that earlier. One, one of the aims of uh, Zafigo actually is to build Zafigo communities for the exact same purpose, so that you can connect with another Zafigo person wherever you go. So if you're alone and uh, you need someone to have dinner with or to suggest somewhere, then we connect you through the website. We're yeah. working towards that. And I think, you know, building community is really important, especially for women, you know, because yeah. then we feel a sense of safety, of course, and we also want to make friends and, and, and things like that. So, yeah, yeah that's something that... Yeah, for those of you above the age of 30, uh, <laughs> come to Zafigo. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you, you know, the, your first question was, are we working on anything? That's what we're actually working on. It's um, like a, a Facebook of sorts, but you know, on the Z uh, Zafigo platform, so p women can connect from all over the world. Put it out there that you're, you know, you're going to be in Istanbul, so somebody who's um, on the Zafigo network who's in Istanbul can actually take you around and stuff like that. Uh, so you couldn't reveal it before, but I the didn't boss didn't want to say anything. So boss said it. I'm just like, okay, cool, yeah, <laughs> yeah you can talk about it now. Uh, Asha and Lavina, do you want to add to Amira's question? Sure. Uh, just just one uh, idea or suggestion for you to explore. Um, so there's a lot of co-working spaces that is mushrooming up these days, right? So depending on where you are, I would usually tap into that platform, the co-working spaces. Right, so um, you can just, you know, I think there are daily rates that you can go and check out. Um, and, and you kind of, most of the time, at least from my own personal experience, um, you kind of meet like-minded people there who are also like, you know, utilizing the co-working space and they are nomads usually. Uh, they've been there for probably longer time and uh, I think nomads, what they do is they don't move around so frequently, probably a month, you know, in a, diff in a particular city. Um, and you get to really connect with uh, people there and, uh, and, and you will be amazed to see how many business opportunities or collaboration that has taken place from, from venturing into uh, co-working spaces. So something for you to think about. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I do when I, when I travel is that I look up for free events that are happening um, in the destination that I'm at. Uh, because there are communities that would get together, whether it's um, a free yoga session in a community park or a, or a music festival or a cooking class or something. And then you can meet a mix of uh, locals um, or travelers like you who are there for, for the same purpose. Um, so look up free events and you'll get uh, information. Zafiga does carry some of that sometimes yeah. um, of events that are happening around the world. And, and so that could be a great place uh, to meet other individuals like you. That's great, Amira. Did, did, was that helpful? You've got three options there: co-working spaces, free events, commu free community events, and Tinder. <laughs> Tinder should pay me. Yeah. So one question up here. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Azian. Azian. Um, yeah. I just. Uh, it's not a question. I just have um, comments or probably experience to share. Sure. Regarding solo traveling, um, I used to travel solo because of work. Um, the only thing that I find it um, um, not interesting traveling solo, part of security and safety reasons, is because I'm um, taking photographs. <laughs> I love taking photographs. I love taking photographs, but I have to be in the photograph. <laughs> so when you travel alone, it's kind of <laughs> difficult to get somebody, a stranger, to take photograph for you, yeah. and you kind of like, tell the stranger you want it this way or you want it that way. <laughs> so that, that's the reason, that's the main reason why I like to travel with somebody. So I just want to share this. That's Your all. personal photographer. <laughs> you now have the, the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 where you can take photo with a pen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Or a photographer through Tinder maybe. Yeah, actually, I've, I've actually seen that uh, being advertised. There was actually a guy uh, recently, like, uh, I think he was Spanish, and um, he was a bit of like a fitness buff, and then it said in his profile, he was like, if you can take 
good photographs, that's a plus. I'm like, wow, okay, at least he was honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Personal tour guides, yeah. So Air Airbnb has the uh, experience where individuals provide personal uh, photographic tours for not very much money, actually, about $25 or so. Did you have a question on uh, the side? Yeah, so one question here and then one. Okay. Hello. Uh, my name is Ili. I'm from Bangi. Um, from ba Bali? Bangi. Bangi. Indonesia? Bangi. Bangi, Bangi. Oh, Bangi. Oh, Bangi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure if there's a question. Uh, I'm more to suggestions and comments, actually. Uh, I've done travels um, solo, with family, with babies. But I find that um, a lot of travels um, in social media always... Um, uh, kind of um, towards solo women travels and then, you know, that's for me easy to do. But with a baby, uh, I don't find that information available as widely as other other travel stuff, I guess. I mean, f solo women travel and so forth. So um, my suggestion, I'm always like trying to, uh, because I've, uh, I've traveled with babies like um, six months, baby and then with toddlers so I'm always looking for um, articles or uh, tips on how to uh, travel with with small kids isn't there a session tomorrow or day after yeah. uh, uh, on, Sunday. on Sunday there is a session yeah. for mothers traveling with I mean for children. me I'm okay with kids actually yeah. because I've, I've done that but I I have a lot of friends actually who has babies, mm -hmm. and they're afraid to right. uh, to bring their babies uh, to travel yes. uh, like to outside of Malaysia. Right. Um, they always ask me for tips like how you breastfeed your f your baby while traveling, yeah. and then yeah. um, I'm so scared to bring um, like a four month baby to go out of Malaysia. Point point them to Zafigo. There's a okay. tab. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a session where she's asking about um, articles. So yeah, yeah so because there's not a lot of yeah. um, tips and Resources. articles on the website about yeah, um, and we realized that babies, yeah. uh, also because two of our uh, team members actually had babies themselves uh, this year, one in May and one a couple of weeks ago. So we've actually looked, um, we've actually gotten actually a few articles uh, contributions from uh, women who are giving tips. Uh, on how to travel with children, whether, you know, ranging from six months to all the way to like five-year-olds, six-year-olds. Um, there's one article that we actually got in the pipeline, I think maybe like two weeks ago, but we haven't published it yet, is about uh, traveling with a special needs child. So that one will go up sometime soon, I think maybe the next month or so. But, um, you know, uh, as with most things these days, if you can't find it, you create it. So if you feel like you have um, tips to share, advice to give, stories to tell, you're more than welcome to, like I said, shoot me an art, uh, uh, an email, and then we can work on a story together, like with you. You know, if you need help in, in sense of direction or just building the story or trying to word it properly, like we can help you with that as well. Or you can go yeah. to Asha's retreat and then set up your own business around exactly, that. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Traveling moms. Um, Lavinia, would you, would, 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 has Expedia looked into this market of women traveling with their children? Yes, we, ha we have. So through our studies, we sometimes get some of these feedback um, similar to yours. And, and we do give that feedback to our partners, meaning our hoteliers and the airline partners that we work with, uh, to ensure they communicate this effectively to, to travelers. Um, so for, for travelers like you, for mothers like you, if you're traveling, connect with, your, with the airlines that you're traveling with to say, hey, I, I have an infant on board. Um, you know, is there any special assistance that you can provide? Um, and so airlines these days, most airlines will provide that service to you. Um, and to, to take away um, your stress, um, and hoteliers will also do that. So we do provide, and we communicate that on our website if you're traveling uh, with, with infants or children of any age. I think there was one question here and then one... Was there a question over on that side? Is there any on that side? No? Right at the back, I think. Okay. 
Hi, I'm Wonder. Heidi. I've been living in Malaysia going on six years and I uh, love traveling the region. Um, uh, for solo travel, I, um, two places came to mind where they have uh, volunteer university students that will show you around and they'll be happily take you to their favorite eating spots and so on. And, uh, I think it was Hanoi and Kathmandu. Mm. Kathmandu, I'm not sure if it's like a, a program as such, but through a friend we had that opportunity. And I think other places in Vietnam will have that too. And it's probably other places, you just have to hunt around for it. Thanks, Heidi. Um, on this side of the room, and then we'll go back into the middle. Hi, um, my name is Jemma Rajaram. Um, I just have a, a comment on uh, traveling with kids. Uh, when, when Lavinia mentioned something about steak, steak, staycation, staycation, staycation. Yeah? Yeah. you can still have your staycation when you travel with kids. I, I remember I went to a hotel in Kuantan, and they had a, tra a daycare center that take, takes care of your kids. So, are, are the tra is the travel industry looking into something like that for uh, for most travelers? So you can travel with your family, as well as um, you can have your staycation during that travel time. So just just a comment. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's a good question. And, and yes, most hotels start to provide that. I think um, uh, Club Med started that concept first. Yep. Um, so where you can, you can, you just pay and you just have your hassle-free <laughs> holiday. And some parents actually don't know where their kids go to and they just see them at night because they have all these programs. Mm -hmm. And more and more hotels are providing that because the staycation concept is rising. Um, it's not just for, for singles who want to go have a staycation. Um, but for also families. Um, I know the Shangri-La group has started that now. So they have um, themed rooms uh, for children. So if you book into certain rooms that they uh, children concept rooms um, and also the play centers and you know, uh, caretakers to take care of your children uh, while you have a relaxing uh, break. That's, thank you very much, Lavinia. And then we go back into the middle, yeah. second, second row from the back. And then after this, I think we've got one room for one more question. Uh, hi, my name is Jashida. Um, I'm a single mom and I have a 10-year-old girl. We're both extroverts, so when we travel, we want to connect. <laughs> we have this need we have to, we want to connect with people. But um, is there any ideas where, you know, I can, not, not with Tinder. No, no, no. I, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> Tinder for you and your 10-year-old. No, not at all. <laughs> um with other single parent with kids similar age. But why not? No. Um, you, no. <laughs> first of all, so. you don't want to bring a strange man around your child. No. Just that's just no, not not um for that. Um I think what you can do for that uh there are Facebook groups that you know like you look in the cities that you're traveling to and then uh like mom groups, you know. And then just kind of leave a message and tell them that Oh, sorry. You know, leave a message in, in the group and say that, you know, I'll be in the city between uh, these dates and whatever. Like, can you know, can we join in on a... I'm, I'm, I'm sure your child's kind of, you know, older, like too old for a play date of sorts. But maybe, uh, you know, mothers who have children in the similar age group. Or you can look at activities that are kid-friendly and then kind of go there and then find, you know, other families or moms who have children who are willing to connect. I think most times most uh, people are quiet okay with that. Asha yeah. is like you. She's a single mom and her daughter is yeah. almost the same age as yours. So, so uh, yeah, so basically for me, I would look up uh, homeschoolers, right? So if I'm visiting a particular country and I know that there is a community of homeschoolers and I would connect with them to see whether during the week, you know, if we could actually get some activities for the kids to, to keep them company. So I think that's really important for me as well. Um, so face gr Facebook groups, definitely. Um, and I would also look like um, under like homeschoolers or there is another group where you do house swaps. You know, um, people would like to come to KL um, and you can actually go over to wherever they are living, right, if you want to do direct swaps. And I think in that community also, they have kids like, you know, around uh, that age group where you can connect and kind of really just uh, get together with, with the kids. Yeah. 
And depending on the destination that you travel to or the country that you travel to, the people do, the schools, the local schools have school fairs and school fates. So uh, if you can find those, you can take, it, it's usually very uh, communal based, so people know one another, so it's a local suburb kind of school. Um, we, I, I've got a nine and a five and a three year old, so we can't do one-on-one on one homeschool. Uh, if you have three children, a lot of people are scared. <laughs> they don't want you. They don't want you in their homes. They don't want you in the cars. <laughs> so, so we find we find school fates. Uh, uh, when we were in France, we went to a school fair, and it was amazing because the kids just interacted among themselves. They just ran free, and uh, we could talk to the other mums and dads and just hang out. So that was quite cool. Yeah, and we did that in London as well. We just went to a school fair, a primary school fair. Mm, that was quite cool. I think um, homestays. Sorry, uh, I think homestays also helps because you connect with the uh, with the locals there, and they can actually advise you as to what local activities that you can engage, you know, with uh, with a kid. Okay, there's one question there. Um, hi, it's a comment um, because, like you're talking about with the local, um, I would really recommend the website. It's called Show Around. It's like where you can book a local to show you around wherever it is and it's either free or you pay like it's pay, like it's very um, different like the prices i was uh, myself and i became really good friends with the person i i i, I showed around um, it's called like yeah i showed him like a, a really nice place in denmark and i learned something about it myself and i ended up not taking money from him because we just like we had a great day so what's yeah. the website showaround.com i show think they have com. an app as well i think they might have yeah showaround.com Thank you. That's yeah, really welcome. helpful. Yeah. Showaround.com. Showaround.com. Show, tunjo. Show. Around? <laughs> Around Kaliling. Bahasa Melayu Dakarat. Any one last question? I always say last and then I say, okay, one more last. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get. Let us get you uh, a mic, one more and the then there. one more. Yeah. Okay, one more last. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Shaz here. Um, I just want to add on uh, Tinder because um, I do a lot of reading on uh, technology application mm -hmm. and whatnot. So um, recently on TechCrunch, if anybody reads, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. content online, uh, TechCrunch just. Um, uh, announced that uh, Tinder, uh, not launched yet, might have a um, um, an edit function if you are more interested to meet people for business or interest. So you don't have to go on Tinder, um, you know, only for dating. Yeah. <laughs> so you can have those two functions, but they have been launched in US yet. Yeah. So just. Uh, I'm, I'm not a spokesperson, <laughs> <laughs> and either uh, I was I wasn't keen on Tinder either. But with this function, I think yeah. um, it, it 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 will change yeah. the whole scenario of dating or meeting people. Yeah, just we, just we, to we add. We don't know how soon. Uh, yeah, but I can share the link to that um, to that article. Yeah. So maybe we can all together <laughs> yeah. um, follow up on that. Yeah. Um, the app Bumble, which is basically a similar like dating app like Tinder, actually has uh, that option. It's called so it has Bumble, which is the yellow interface where you actually look for dates and whatnot. And then it has the BFF function, which is a mint green uh, interface where you actually you know you connect with people who have interests. So a, a lot of times, looking at the app um, on the yellow interface, Bumble. It's all men, and if you go to BFF, you actually find women who literally say in their profiles that looking for like-minded girls to go get drinks. They just, they're just, especially here in KL, you know, you have uh, women from like the UK and Australia and all over Europe and everything. They come into KL by themselves, and they're just looking for a group of local girlfriends where they can just go have drinks, learn about the city, fo have food, you know, do daily activities and stuff like for the duration that they're here. So that option is actually available on Bumble, which also, by the way, interestingly enough, if you do match with a man, the man cannot approach you or send you a message until you initiate conversation. That message feature does not open up for them until you make the first move. So I guess it's a little bit safer and you also don't get unsolicited messages. 
So yeah, Bumble, I think maybe is a safer option with uh, you know the feature that Tinder is actually going to pick up now. Yeah. Thank you. Is there one there? Um, hi everyone. Um, my name is Nisa. Uh, okay, first of all, um, I'd like to like suggest um, other than show around, uh, I also uh, show around, right? Showaround.com. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to suggest to uh, use this one other platform, which is Couchsurfing. Yeah. So like they have like um, different communities under that platform that you can follow, and then you, you can like for myself, um, whenever I travel, I always find like other hosts at other countries so that I can get like free or almost free, free or cheap um, accommodation, and then you can also like um, do some um, experience, some local experiences that your host uh, um, couch surfing couch surfing dot com. Sorry? Um, so that's C O U C H. S U R so couch as in a sofa couch yeah. surfing S U R F I N G dot com dot com yeah like Nisa I have a question how long have you been doing couch surfing um I think about five years now five years yes and and how do you determine whose couch you actually surf on um so actually they have like verified accounts and right. then you can also see the um, reviews and ratings that other people have uh, you know um uh, experienced before okay so that could actually like give you a little bit of confidence of right. who you and are you particular with. in in who you pick uh, um, like as in like do you specifically just only go for females uh, female hosts or uh, you know do, do you just are you okay with men as long as the rating is there as the verification is there like how yeah like uh, for myself if I would like to host people I o I only like accept female travelers okay and then like if I go out and travel alone um, I would pick like um, people who have hostels and things like that Right. So okay. like, yeah. So sometimes, like when I became friends with them, so like they uh, would just give me free accommodation <laughs> instead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so like the other, um, this is a question. Uh, I have a side project that I'm working on, mm -hmm. which is actually um, caters for people who like to try outdoor experiences. Right. So like I uh, gather operators all over Malaysia um, to do like water rafting, hiking trips, mm -hmm. or like. Um, Rope swing in KKB. I don't know if anyone have tried that. Right. So like, I would like to see if I can make it like a sustainable business, like you know, like for the long run. So I don't want to just make it a side project. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm here now today is to actually see the market that I can tap into. Right. So I'm looking into like the female market actually. Okay. But like, um, based on my experiences, like handling all these trips, I could see like the. The wants is that is there like um, a lot of female would like to try outdoor experiences, but uh, I don't know what are the factors that actually stop them to do so. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I notice is that um, they have like um, phobias, you know, like phobia, um, afraid of heights, fear of heights, and things like that. But like I'd like to know more or understand more about like the female market. Why is it like what actually stops you from doing? Outdoor experiences, right. like um, I've tried um, four wheel drive. I, I mean, I've I've done like uh, classes, uh, learning about four wheel drive, and then I've done rope swing as well. Rope swing is a little bit um, like bungee jumping, uh, okay. but you basically so swing. So, what was the name again? Nisa. Uh, the name Nisa. Yes, Nisa. Nisa. So, Nisa has a question for you. She would like to know what's stopping you from doing adventure trips and if you have answers to that please walk up to Nisa. Nisa can you please wave yes. your hand again and and give her your answers to help her move her agenda forward. Yeah if you could. Thank you Nisa. Thank you. Uh, one more comment um, I believe from the front so last comment and then I will ask the panelists to summarize the session for us. Uh, right in front please. No, we, because we want to record mic. it too. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Gladys. Uh, I'm from Kuching, Sarawak, but living in KL. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that if you are into sketching, drawing, there's urban sketching groups everywhere in the world. And that's a good way um, to get out and see the city through different views. Uh, so I try and connect with my urban sketching group, people who sketch. So we go out and, and s sketch every nook and crack, uh, you know, and if we can, when we see. Uh, you know. So it's a good way to get to know the city and the people. Uh, 
And uh, so I, I just want to let you know that it's called Urban Sketches Record Group online uh, in, on FB. I yeah. have a question. Is yeah. being able to draw a prerequisite? <laughs> Because what if I just okay. want to hang out? The thing <laughs> is, no one judges, all right? Okay. No one judges. Okay. And, and it's a good way because you, you learn from all these masters, we say, right? right? And um, no, nobody judges. You can draw a cup of coffee, you know? <laughs> what if I can't even do that? You just watch then. Okay. <laughs> so I can just hang out, right? Yes, I don't have to like have a pen and a pad. Hang out. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's nice. That that's one way of uh, getting to know the city and the people. Right. Yeah, yeah. So oh, instead thank of you, Gladys. Uh, the, wait, who was the one who said they wanted photo Yeah, it was you, right? You wanted a, ph a photographer. Instead of um having a photographer, you could get a sketcher like to sketch your <laughs> portrait <laughs> somewhere then. That's so pretty the cool, the I think. The thing with me is I don't like to be in photos. So ah, see, but you I could be in a sketch though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So sometimes uh, we do self-portraits. We sketch ourselves. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's all. Thank you, Gladys. Um, I know there are still some comments from the floor, but we are running out of time and we have to go for lunch. And I don't want to be responsible for coming in the way of lunch. But what I've what I've asked the panelists to do is uh, to give us a picture that summarizes this whole session, you know, of what women want when they travel. So, um, Asha has, provide this pic has provided this picture uh, as a summary of what women want when they travel. Do they want more drinks? Do they want more color? I don't know. Let's ask Asha what she wants to express through the, her picture. Okay, so... Um I think there's, there's, it was really hard for me to pick one picture in isolation, you know, when it comes to uh, what is it that, you know, I or women um, want when we travel. But I think the important thing here is connecting with like-minded people, right? Um, and I, I, f I feel that um, it really boils down to what is it that you're looking for when you travel? because we are all different individuals. We have different needs, different wants, uh, different mindsets. So if you are traveling uh, for, for example, if you're looking at really wanting to experience local culture, then it's basically you know, connecting with the locals that would, is going to serve that purpose for you, right? So for me, I think this picture, uh, it depicts a lot about uh, coming together as a community um, women, you know, sort of like really taking charge of our lives and being the best version of, you know, of who we are. Um, and, and that's exactly what happened here um, in Bagur in Spain. Um, and uh, I think this picture really is very close to heart, my heart. Um, and, and yeah, I think uh, it's regardless of ethnicity, regardless of age, re regardless of, you know, color, um, we came together because we had um, one common denominator, right? And it's basically empowering and uplifting one another. This is, guess wh whose picture is this one? Eli Eliza's or Lavinia's? <laughs> okay, please reveal yourself. <laughs> yeah, that um, th th this picture um, represents a sense of um, calmness, uh, peace of mind, uh, detachment from the, um, the the crazy world that we all live in. Um, and I think um, ultimately we all look for that when we travel. Uh, nobody wants to come back from a uh, travel looking like a mess. We all want to come back looking relaxed and you know just rejuvenated. Um, and that's what we look for when we travel. We just want a sense of calmness, um, a peace of mind, no one um, asking you where you are, what you ate every few seconds. So just detach yourself um, and experience this once in a while. That's a great message, Lavina. <laughs> Eliza. So um, I, I picked this picture because when when Dr. Catherine asked, you know, what do you think women really want? I could just only speak for myself, like, because I think that's like the safest, um, you know, person, like safest point I can speak from, um, is a sense of like contentment to know that at, at 
you know, the end of the day, at, at an old age, when you know, when I'm too old to to move around or do anything, that I've done everything that I've wanted to do. Um, you know, just looking at my grandmother, who is uh, 84. You know, she's she's had knee surgeries and hip replacements and stuff like that, and she's only ever left the country one time to go to India. Um, and you know, she was only there for two weeks, and that was it. She's never been on a plane again, you know. And uh, I asked her because when she, when I when I started this job, she asked me what it is that I do at this job, and I told her. And um, she asked me, "Are you you know, w will you be traveling a lot?" And I was like, um, "You know, it's entirely up to me. Whatever travels that I do is, you know, only it supplements my work and whatever content that I put out." And she kind of kept quiet for a little bit, and you know, she's like, "Well, you can do that now. You have the opportunity to do that now because at your age, I had nine children. You know, I'm 32. She had nine kids by 29. So you know, so and 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 she said like, I wish I could go see the world. She's never even been to Singapore, and that's literally a car drive away. She's never been there. You know, so when, thinking about that, when to answer um, Dr. Catherine's question, when I thought about it, I was like. At the end of the day, I want to be happy. I want to be content. I want to be satisfied. And I think it, that's what most women would want. At the end of the day, to be able to look back at their lives and, and see that I did that. I went here. I experienced this. I learned that. I ate this. You know, there, there's like that, that plethora of, uh, of lessons and experiences that enriches your soul, that belongs to you and only you. And yeah, I think that's what women want at the end of the day. Yeah. Just reflecting on all three answers, we see that what women want are very intangible, fulfilling, internal, meaningful experiences when we travel. And yet, how do we acquire these meaningful internal experiences? We need the tools to get there. Right? You all talked about some more physical, tangible needs. Like, how do we get away from responsibilities in order to experience what Lavinia talked about, what Asha talked about, what you talked about? You, we talked about things like how do we, how do we, prov how do we, all these tangible things that you shouted out before in order to get to this situation, to, to, this, to this, uh, this level of experiences where we can be detached. So there are some more things for us to think about and I think the next two days will be filled with discussions on how we can achieve this. I think we'll all get a lot out of it, even just from the sh sharing session before with all your, um, all your recommendations and suggestions. I think they've been really helpful. In closing, you know, someone once told me that the best gift you can give someone is your time. And you've given us one and a half hours of your time here today. On behalf of these three amazing women on stage, we are we don't know everything, but it's been a privilege to share this stage with all three of you and this room with all of you. Thank you for giving us your time. Wow.